ever get home from shooting a wedding and find yourself completely overwhelmed and don't know what to do next? Well, today I'm gonna deep dive into what my post-wedding workflow process looks like and what I do from the time I get home from a wedding day until delivery day. Let's dive in. Hi guys, my name's Hannah. I'm a Michigan-based wedding and couples photographer turned educator here to help you level up your biz. Today I'm gonna to break down and share with you guys what my post-wedding workflow looks like and how I stay productive throughout the entire process. Creating an efficient post-wedding workflow can drastically improve your turnaround time when it comes to delivering weddings. So my hope is that today, by me sharing what my workflow looks like, you can pull some tips and tricks out of that and implement those into your current workflow. The first thing I do as soon as I get home from a wedding is back up the images that I took. I shoot on dual slot cameras so there are two SD cards in the cameras when I come home. So I will take one SD card out of the camera and plug it into my computer and the other SD that serves as backup for me I immediately put into a safe envelope. I then download the images from the SD card to my computer as well as an external hard drive. Once the images are all downloaded onto my computer as well as the external hard drive I'll take the SD card out of my computer and move it into the envelope that I put the the first card in. Usually I'll label each envelope with the name of the couple of the wedding I shot as well as the date so that it's organized and when I need to go back to those cards I know how to get there. The reason that I hold onto the SD cards after I've imported all the images is so that if anything ever goes wrong in my computer or with an external hard drive I have the physical copies on those SD cards ready to go. The next step in my post-wedding workflow is the most tedious by far and that is culling. I try to call a wedding within the week that I shot it just because the wedding is fresh on my brain. So maybe a family member put in a request for a specific photo and I'm going through calling that photo might not have caught my eye as something that I would add to the final gallery but because the wedding is fresh in my brain I remember oh they asked specifically for the shot so I'll remember to keep that photo. Calling can be so time consuming, so I often will use a software called Photo Mechanic just to speed up the process and not slow me down. Photo Mechanic will go through your images and essentially take out the ones that weren't the best takes, like maybe somebody's eyes were closed or the focus wasn't tack sharp or there's just five of the same images. They'll take those photos, get rid of them so that you're working with less photos when it comes to editing. After I've gone through and called a wedding album and pulled out the best shots, I will take that wedding album and break it into five smaller albums. This is a huge Huge game changer for me because it's really overwhelming when I go into Lightroom and I see that a wedding album has let's say 4,000 pictures but if I break that into getting ready, ceremony, family, portraits, reception, like five smaller sections of the day, I can see, oh, I have a few hundred pictures in this album that I need to get through. It's just way less overwhelming for me and that way I can break up the day chronologically. Not only does breaking up a wedding album help me as far as being overwhelmed, but it also helps me to pace myself and get things done quicker when it comes to the editing process. So the next step in my post-wedding workflow is the editing itself. My personal turnaround time for weddings is 30 days or one month, so it's really important to use a lot of efficient tips and just make sure that I'm pacing myself to stay on track. My top ways for keeping my editing process efficient and meeting those deadlines are to set goals, sync edits, and take breaks when necessary. When I set goals for editing a wedding gallery, you guys, I tend to break it up as much as possible. I avoid at all costs sitting down and doing two to three hour editing sessions. I've found that if I just do 30 to an hour, the edits I will get are so much more quality than if I sit down and just tire my eyes out for two to three hours and try to whip through a wedding album. So like I said, I break it into those subcategories of the day. I get through small chunks so that I'm not editing and then coming back the next day and realizing my edits suck and I have to redo it and wasting a lot of my time. So to avoid editing fatigue, I would challenge you guys to try to implement those smaller, shorter editing sessions than those long ones. Syncing edits is another lifesaver when it comes to editing a full wedding album. There will be a lot of times when the background's the same, the lighting same. If you get an edit you like in that scenario, copy and paste that to the pictures that you took in that setting or in that lighting. Instead of going through and individually editing each image, copy and paste the editing settings onto those photos and go back and tweak instead of editing each individual photo. If you aren't already syncing your edits, you need to be. It'll change your life. Once all of my editing has been completed, my next step in my post-wedding workflow is delivery. I personally upload all of my edited images to a gallery delivery system called Pixie Set. 
I love that Pixie Set allows you to create folders in the wedding album that you're delivering. So like I said, because I break the wedding album up into about five folders, I will just take those folders and upload them straight to Pixie Set and keep the day split up in those chronological folders so that clients aren't looking at thousands and thousands of photos. They're looking at a few albums of a hundred. The day is broken up chronologically. It just looks more organized and well put together in my opinion. Once all of my images are uploaded to Pixie Set, I work on moving and placing images strategically as well as designing the album. Now, every photographer might take this step, but I think it's so important in your client experience to give a final result that just looks amazingly presented. Think about it this way, you spend so much time creating and editing these stunning images, you don't wanna have a sloppy presentation. So taking the little bit of extra time in curating your gallery and just making it have a wow factor is gonna up your client experience so much. Once the gallery is all ready to go and looks beautiful, I send it off to my clients via email and do a little happy dance. Now I know my process might look a little bit different than yours or another photographer's, but I hope that in sharing this today, it can give you a little bit of insight into what another photographer's workflow might look like and maybe you can take some tips and tricks that I talked about today, implement that into your workflow and improve it. Creating a step-by-step -step workflow will drastically improve your productivity in the post-wedding process. So I challenge you guys to sit down and look at what your process looks like and see what minor or maybe major improvements you can make to it. As always, if you have any questions about what I talked about today, feel free to leave me a comment below. If you found this video helpful, I would love if you could give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next week for more educational content.